aging. Today's subject is about aging. And from a King James 1611 Bible. Yes, it talks about getting old. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And it's amazing that I remember I was a little boy one time. And my mom was downstairs in the basement doing the laundry or something. I forget what it was. And I was down there too, you know, playing around. And I just, all of a sudden, we were both lost. We grew up as a Catholic. And also, I turned around and I said, Mom? He goes, yes, Stanley. I said, did I come with instructions when I was born? And she to I don't know exact answer, but she said, no. My mom is saved today. She's been saved since 2009. I've been saved since 1987. And I want to tell you, babies come with instructions. It's a King James 1611 Bible. Now, you're not going to find the recipe how to make brownies. You're, some things you're going to have to look and study and, and read. You've got to read your Bible every day. Because there comes a time that you may not be able to read it. Now let's get into Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I know I'm saying it wrong. I apologize. I don't think God would, would put it to wood, hay, and stubble. And let's look at aging. I am 54 years old. I carry a cane now. I use a walker. Times I need oxygen. I'm getting ready, please pray, to go into a nursing home for my safety. And some of these things I'm seeing in my life, and hopefully I can explain to you. Maybe you're old. Maybe you're an elder. Maybe you're a teenager. You don't know yet. So remember now thy creator. Never forget Jehovah God, Lord Jesus Christ. They're the creator. You did not come from monkeys. You did not happen by accident. You were not a nothing, and here you are. You were here by God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And with that, he, he created the trees. He created islands, water, man, cows, chickens. In the days of that youth, because it's kind of funny to say that today in America, the youth in the public school are not learning about the Creator. They're not learning about God. There is no Bible in the public schools. They're taught Darwinism, evolution. That's a shame. While the evil days come not, hey, you're going to have great and wonderful days. You're going to have, wow, all right, great day. And then you're going to have evil day. And evil doesn't mean wicked, wild. It means, evil means the result from sin. Evil means bad, terrible. And you're going to, Galatians 6, 7, one day you're going to reap what you sowed. That is evil. I recently had, and right here in my family, I had one time, there was a, there was a very tragic event for me with my feelings and I'm sitting down and I'm like oh my God, I'm praying and I'm upset and I remember a day a period in time in my life I'd done that to my mother I reap how I conducted myself with my parents 40 30 years later yes <laughs> 30 to 40 years later, I am reaping stuff as a child. I am a diabetic. I'm a full-blown diabetic. It runs in my family. Okay. But I'm a diabetic today. I'm heavy. I've had amputations because of my diet throughout the years. I've had a horrible, sugary diet. I'm, evil is everything I'm going through with diabetes. My fault. Nor do years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. I'm getting to the point. When I was young, we used to go kind of places, Lisa and I, and take the kids. We go here, we go there. I mean, anywhere we went, we had fun. Now, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go out. 
Though now I'm so bored, I want to go. My daughter and I, she, she worked hard the other day. She was having a hard time at work yesterday. I said, let's go to McDonald's. She goes, okay. I said, let's go to McDonald's and sit and have a meal. She's like, wow. And I was freezing. <laughs> That's another thing you get with, I get with old age. I remember my grandma. Cold. So we got there, we're eating a meal. I'm like, oh, come on, I'm freezing. I should have brought a coat. But you know what? We had a good time together. I I thought the McDonald's Happy Meal was another another prize. You say, okay, I'll get the Happy Meal, Chicken Nugget Happy Meal. And what the, it would have been for Rachel because she would enjoy, but it was another prize. And here you go, Rachel. And we joked and we had a good time. But when you get in your old age and your body hurts and it, and it hurts to get up and it hurts to walk and hurts, 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 hurts. And wherever you go, you know, you, you, you got to go to the bathroom, whatever you go, you, you know, it's just you lose pleasure. So when the churches are seeking fun and pleasure and entertainment, they are leaving out the old people in the church, the elders of the church for the young. Friend, you need to have the elders work with the youth. Don't leave them out. While the sun, the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, you still have light. Nor the clouds return after the rain. There's still life in you. You're not dead. I'll tell you nothing. We won't read here. You get to the point, as I am, you so much desire heaven. That this world is not your own. It's just wickedness all around. You want to die. You pray to God to die. You know you're going to heaven. You know how much heaven is better. How well heaven is. And you want to go. And you wake up the next morning. Oh, I guess God needs me. Paul says to be absent from the body. Present with the Lord. But it's more needful for me to be here. I didn't, you know, didn't quote that correctly. Every day you wake up is because God has a reason. For it. I need to learn that because I want to go home. Now, I may be ha having in my life, I may be having things where, you know, if I get an operation, I may ruin my kidney. I may have to have dialysis. And I've said to my children, I really don't want dialysis. But you know what? I love my children. And maybe I should do that. If I get that, I may not have dialysis. But if I do, In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. Now, Ezekiel 40, 45, and 44, 14. The keepers of the house are the guards. They protect the doors. And there's coming a day, you know what? Your protection is going to be weak. You know, I'm not a gun advocate. If you want to get a gun, perfect. You don't want a gun, perfect. You don't want a gun? Don't bother the people that do want a gun. It's not a sin to have a gun. You say, well, Stiley, I said in the past, I said, you know, somebody would, would buy me a gun and pay for lessons for me and my daughter. Okay, I'll do it. But you know what? With my neuropathy and the, and the lack of feeling I have in my hand now, I don't even know if I could pull the trigger. I had the nurses come for uh, rehab. She gave me a, a wooden clothespin. You you know what a wood, wooden clothespin is. You know, you, you press it and you put your clothes up on the line. I couldn't even open the clothespin. That's an exercise. I, I, it's, I got it right here. Here it is. My wood. Wood. Uh, uh, I'm having a hard time opening it. And once I get open, then I can do it. That's an exercise for me and my hands. That's how bad my hands are. At church, I'll be making notes, and when I look up at the pastor, I drop my pen. Because i got to see it now. I have a hard time using utensils for eating. So there will be a day when your guard is down. I, When I was in school, my mom allowed me to go to judo. For protection, learning how to protect myself. Man, if I try to do one of those moves and and you know the Judah move, the Judah moves and all that, trying to get them down, you know, I would fall myself. 
It would be hysterical to watch me do wrestling or judo. And there may come a day, you, you may be a gun advocate, there may come a day you can't even hold that thing. You've know, you got somebody in the house, you got the gun. I see people like that, and I pray for them. They're in church and their hands shake. It's not very good if your hands shaking. Um, I don't know if Muhammad Ali is still living. George Foreman, I don't know. I, I wonder how they're, they're, they're protected. I wonder what happened if they're still living. I don't know. But if you were to get them back in the ring, they're old. And the strong man shall bow themselves. All right. Hey, you got muscles. You go to the gym. You lift weights. One day, you're going to have a hard time lifting your butt off the chair. You're going to go to pick something up. Uh, uh, I need help. Your weak, your your strongness, your strength will turn to weakness. Now I don't know how bad it'll get. I mean, yeah, you got old people. You know, they still lift weights and this and that. Yeah, but, you know, the moment you get down, the moment a, a virus starts. A flu gets you, or you're in a hospital for something, or you, and you, then you know what? Your body starts losing that strength. Arthritis may set in, and you won't be able to pick up those weights. I'm not against weightlifting. I'm not. Listen, I went to the gym. I couldn't do the, the, the treadmill because of the way my feet are. I tried to do the, the cycle, you know, the, the 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 bike that doesn't move anywhere. My feet kept falling off, and I had the thing where I do my hands. You would laugh if you see how much the weights I lift. It was like only what, three pegs down. Was that 30, 30 pounds or whatever? If that, maybe 15. Your strength one day will get less. It will get weak with age. It will get weaker with medical ailments. I mean, like I said, I'm, 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 I want to go to a nursing home. Pray for me. I'm going to meet people in there, and they're going to—they have a hard time picking up little things. And the grinders cease because they are few. And that's not the grinder you eat. That's not the grinder you use for building with metal. That's your teeth. There are people of age today out the world, they can't afford dentures, and they are limited to what they eat because they don't have no more teeth or a few teeth. Me, I have dentures. Praise the Lord. Thank God. They work without any the the, the gel or the cream you have to put on them. My grandma with her dentures always had to fight with her dental cream. There may come a time, and people throughout the world, they may only have very few teeth. They can't, they can't eat. They have to have mushy stuff. They have to have puree stuff. My grandmother was a, a, a chef at a nursing home. And my brother and I would go there, and we would watch. And you see this lovely meal. And then she put it in, the, in this blender, and it came out as mush. And that's how some of the people in a nursing home eat. Because they have no teeth. They're, they're not going to, and they probably long for corn on the cob. Maybe something as, as simple as a hamburger. There are places where the mother for her children or a wife for her husband, they would chew the food and then give it to their, their child or to their husband. Those that look out of the windows be darkened. Glasses. Where, where'd you guys go? My glass. You, you say darkened. I've got glasses where they change darkness when I go out in the sun. You see, the Bible's correct. It's something as, I forget what they call it, as getting glasses that go dark that turn to sunglasses. Well, the Bible just said, I mean, look, at, they get dark. So I'll step outside, the sun's up, and it starts getting, you know, 
my glasses turn into sunglasses. They get dark. But there are people in the Bible, like you read Jacob, his eyes have grown dim. He's old. And he can't see. And there are Christians out there today. They're old. Their eyes are darkened. Maybe partially or all the way blind. And they can't read their Bible no more. There are people, you know, read your Bible, read your Bible. There are people who can't. Because the eyes go. The teeth go. The eyes go. The strength go. The protection, the guardianship goes. A lot of things go, a lot of things go with age. And you don't think about it when you're young. The doors shall be shut in the streets. You don't want to go out. That door outside, that door that goes outside is always closed. There has to be a reason to go out, a doctor's appointment. You got to go shopping. And it's not COVID 19. We got things now in a lot of places today. You can call up, you go online, you can have your groceries delivered. Okay, so there's another reason not to go out. I'll have my, I'll have my groceries delivered. I'll give them a tip and ask them to bring it inside the door. There are people today, they're in there, they don't go out, they don't know who their neighbors are. And I grew up in an age where you went outside. Listen, I went outside in the morning after breakfast during the summer. I came home for lunch, went back out, came home for dinner. And listen, I was all over New London, New London, Connecticut, where I grew up, everywhere. I ventured everywhere. When 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 we moved to Norwich, I was everywhere in Norwich. My son and I, we had gospel tracks, and we went out. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe we hit every house with gospel tracks, except for you know the houses look bad in it or forsaken. But I believe we hit, and we went to places like my wife who grew up in Norwich as a girl. She was there. Well, what, what's and we would drive her over here and look, and she didn't even know that, that that place existed. Today, I don't want to go anywhere. I'm lonely right now. I hate loneliness, and I'm talking about my health and being around people is the reason why I want to go in a nursing home. My daughter fears for me being home alone. She says my mind's going a little bit, and I forget things. I back again. I gotta take my medication, put it over here to realize I have not taken it yet. Because I because I forget. I'm the kind of person you know. If I if I if I'm not sure if I took my medicine, I won't take it. Being afraid that I overdid, overdosed. That's not healthy, especially when it comes to blood pressure medicine. The sound of grinding is low. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the sound of grinding is low. You're not doing much work. The, the, the grinder, the drills, the sanding, all the tools, the hammering, The other day, I, I needed to drill something. You know the last time I picked up that drill? You know, I got to have my daughter. My daughter fixed our toilet. She changed the whole entire uh, valve system in the toilet. I can't do it. I have a hard time. My health, I, I can't unscrew a, a nut. I can't twist this. I cannot do the things. That's where you got to have people in church come and help you. That's where you got to have your neighbors help you, your family help you. Because you know what? We're getting old. We're not as strong as we used to be. He shall rise up at the voice of the bird. 
are you at the age right now something little wakes you up? Something minor? My daughter, she's 20 years old. That girl could sleep through a train going through her room. You can put dynamite and set it off in her room. She'd still be sleeping. Me? Sometimes a truck going, and I'm in the back. Sometimes I hear a truck. Sometimes the, you know, the fireworks way over there. There are things that just wake me up. What's that? What was that? A, li a little bird. You might have a bird. We got two of them. You probably hear them every once in a while. Your pet bird that, that you love and you take care of, and you they wake you up. <laughs> so you put the cover over the cage so they don't sing because you want to sleep. The, the the meowing of your cat. Maybe your dog is laying on the floor, laying in bed, having a dream, and barking, and, and that wakes you up. And all the daughters of music, it's okay with a K, it's just the old fashioned spelling, shall be brought low. So, you know, it'll be, you know what? You don't listen to much music. You, you, you don't, if, if you're in the world and all that, you're, we're, rock and roll it, it will be too loud for you. It, it bothers your ears. You're going to get some nice, mellow music. You don't enjoy these modern church movements with the, the guitars and the rock. And the, you don't enjoy that. You like just the piano. The organ. It, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the organ, but you know what? That's just too loud. The volume of the music has to go up because you can't hear, but the tendency of the music and the tone of the music and sometimes you know what? You don't even want to hear music. See, your ears start failing but your motivation starts weakening. Also, <laughs> all we, you know, look at four verses. Also, you mean there's more? When they shall be afraid of that which is high. You're afraid of heights when you get older. How about the Bible speaks about high as people of authority? People, there are people in America today, Christians and unsaved, they are afraid of what the government's going to do with Social Security. They're afraid what they're going to do with Medicaid and Medicare. They're afraid that their children or their doctor is going to put them in a nursing home. I don't, it don't bother me. They are afraid of authority. They are afraid of heights. They have come to be, and we'll see in a minute, fears shall be in the way. Anxiety comes in. I have always been afraid of heights. There's a building here I have to go to every once in a while in Daytona Beach. The IRS office is there. and. They got this open area, and you know you, you come to the edge. And it's got a railing, and then you got you, you can look down below in the office lobby, and, and then they got a glass all glass panel wall, so you can look out, see the courtyard and the road and all that. I walk up to that railing now. Listen, I'm in a building. I'm on a concrete floor, and I look out that window. I'm afraid. I've always had that fear of heights. Sometimes I've been able to conquer it, sometimes not. I needed to get over that fear of heights when I worked for General Dynamics building submarines. Submarines, when they're on the dry dock, you're way up in the air. You got to walk this little platform. You better not be afraid of heights. I'm claustrophobic. I've also come to be fear of being alone. Listen, I moved out of my parents' house when I started working at General Dynamics. 
I, I was in my dad's house. He allowed me to save up money to get an apartment. And I did. I, I got money. I got me an apartment. I was alone. I didn't like it. But I worked second shift. And so, you know, most of the time I slept. Then I met Lisa. And Lisa and I got married. And I, I was with her. Then she died. And there was a period of time. All right. I was living at my father's father-in-law's house. I was my, my son and my daughter. Okay, I had somebody. Then I married Tracy. And I had Tracy. And Tracy died in 2019. I got my daughter. My daughter needs to grow up. She's 20 years old. She can't. She, she loves me. She takes care of me. I got to let her go and have a life. But here I am. During the day, she's at work. I'm here. I'm afraid of being alone. She has caught me with my walker out in the middle of the street. Because she's late. She texts me when she's at the light at the bottom of the hill. She'll call me up. She'll come home. Because she knows, like, I don't know where, where, where this fear came from. I got a fear of being alone. I, I hate being alone. I got a fear. So. Let's go over to 2 Timothy. Let's go over to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is not of God. But of power. You want power? It comes from God, not the electric company. You want superpowers? It doesn't come from a cape and, and being bit by an antelope or whatever. It comes from God and of love. Listen, are you a Christian? For God so loved the world. God loved you before you're saved. God loves you when you're saved. God will love you eternity. But he'll give you power and love when it comes to fear and a sound mind. You know one thing happens as you get older and older and you get aged and elder and elderly? Your mind starts going. I get a point. One time recently, we were going to Walmart. And you can go in this entrance for the main entrance or you can go in this entrance for the pharmacy area. So we were going to the pharmacy and my door is going down the road. I can't drive no more. I can't feel the, the, the gas pedal or the brake pedal. I cannot drive. Elderly, as it happens, you get to the point you can't do things no more. So we're going down Bevel, Bevel, whatever you call it. I never knew what I was saying. And next thing you know, you know what? I don't even know, I don't even remember where I was. And my daughter puts the single light on and starts, wait, 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 wait. She goes, Dad, we're And there was another time my daughter put the single light on. We were, so, we were somewhere like, well, what are you doing? She, we're turning in here. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Dad, relax. I'll be in a grocery store. I just lose it. I'll be sitting here. I just lose it. There are times I sit here in my seat. I'm studying, reading my Bible. And I'll look over, I'll look over at the door and like, what's that? Where am I? And I'm like, I don't realize I'm in my living room. I'm, I'm sitting in my chair at my desk. I don't even know where I'm at. I don't understand. That's your mind. And at that period of time and at that period of age, you're going to get the spirit of fear. It's not God. But God will give you power, love, and a sound mind. Now, when we go back to Ecclesiastes, watch what it says. He says, and when they shall be afraid of that which is high, fear shall be in the way. Now, God said he does not give the spirit of fear. Solomon, writing on worldly aspects of life, not the godly, but the worldly. Don't run to Ecclesiastes for spirituality. Run to Ecclesiastes for the fact that looking at the world, Solomon says when you get old, fears are going to come. Paul told Timothy. Paul the age told Timothy, 
that fear is not of God. He'll give you power. He'll give you strength. He'll give you love even when you're old, but you still have the fears. There's nothing wrong with fears if you don't let it conquer you. And you're going to have them and, and you're going to maybe get more. I don't know. I'm not that old yet. I hope I don't. I hate anxiety. I hate the fear of fear. If I can say that. I don't like heights. I don't like being in a closed area. And I don't like being alone. I don't like when they put a needle in me to, to get blood or, but you know, I can deal with that. Okay. <laughs> they always say just a little pinch. Yeah, right. You may have fears and anxiety and a doctor may give you medication. That's okay. Jesus said, you know, if, if you're not whole, go to a physician. But don't put your trust, don't put your faith in the psychiatrist. Don't put your, your, your all your all in the doctor. Don't put your belief and your worship in the pharmacist. Put your trust and faith in God and the power and the love and the sound mind that he can use medication as an aid and not as a crutch. Sometimes in medication, say, Lord, doctor told me not to do it. But you know, this hour of medication, this time I'm not going to take, and this is bad advice. This is bad advice. But sometimes I say, you know, Lord, is going to trust you. And I'm talking about medicine, not your heart medicine. Not your important medicine, your heart, kidneys, or anything like that. I'm talking about your me your medicine for anxiety. You got a fear of people, and they do. Some people don't don't go out because they don't go to malls. They don't go because the people. That's fears. They're real, and you you, you can't blast them with, with you know with a cannon and with a gun and shoot them down because they're real. And a person that has anxieties and has fears, he don't need you taunting him. You need he needs you to pray for them. The almond tree shall flourish. You know what an almond tree? They're beautiful white leaves and flowers. You'll see pictures. I don't know what time it is, but there, that time of year, you'll see pictures, I think, Washington, D.C. They got almond trees, and they're all white. You know what that is? That's your hair. Your hair is going to go gray. It's going to go white. Your beard, my beard is going gray. I got white right here. Sometimes I get white right around here. I got to get that, that just for man hair dye, and I got to dye my beard because it looks stupid. My beard and mustache comes out stupid. I got this big white spot. But, I mean, you can get the hair dyes and all that. Your hair is too white. It's too gray. You know something beautiful? And I'm going to see this a lot in the nursing home. There's nothing beautiful than seeing an elderly woman with white hair. You know what that says? I'm old. I grew old. I come to this age. And it stands out. You don't see a, a, a teen bopper. You don't see a teenager. You don't see any of these young, stylish people out there. You don't see them dyeing their hair white. They'll do purple, red, green, whatever. They don't do white. Because white hair is a badge of honor. Hey, look how many years I live. You know, it's a badge of honor that I'm getting great hair at 54 years old because I'll tell you what, there are some things I did when I was a child, I should have been dead. Only God protected me. I could sit here and I could tell you story after story of the stupid things I've done and the things that have happened to me that I should have been dead. I'm not. God's giving me power. God's giving me a sound mind. And God's giving me love. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. Oh, the little things. You know, my daughter said, uh, Dave, we were talking. And I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida. I mean, we got the 500. 
we get the bikers and all that. And listen, we've done, I think, three or four years, the bike ministry. We sat on Main Street. I preached. She gave out gospel tracts. We did it for three or four years. Getting my health. I can't I can't do street preaching anymore. I can't do public ministry. My, my legs and I'm praying the Lord to give me something else. I want to do something for the Lord. But the little things. We hear motorcycles all the time here. That irritates me. The mufflers. All that irritates me. And the one thing that really irritates me the most is you got these cars and they fix themselves up so the, the exhaust systems are loud. That irritates the fire out of me. And my daughter says, I, Dad, I've seen it. I hear a car's got that. Blah, 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 blah. I want to blow it up. <laughs> I want to knock it off the road and make it shut up. Now, a car that's got a muffler that's bad, naturally, okay. But when you fix your car to be loud, I, I, I tell my daughter, I said, take that car, put it in a room. It's, it's all sealed up by the door. Put that driver in that room, and he's got to listen to that thing bat, 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 for an hour. You know, it's either Japan or China. Uh, Japan or China. If you are caught with your high beams on, they put you in a room and they put a chair in front of your car and put the high beams on and you got to stare at it. Little things become a burden. You start putting things off. I don't want to do that. I'll do it later. Sometimes it gets you in trouble. You know, you just... Maybe even your pet. Oh, really? Like a... You know, the little things, the grasshopper, a fly, at any age, a fly is a pest. If there's a fly in the house, he's right here bothering me. The desire shall fail. You, the things, you, your bucket list, the things, the activities you want to do, they don't happen. I told Rachel the other day, I said, I said now that I can't drive, I said, you know, I said, one of my things I've always wanted to do, I can't. She goes, what's that? I've always wanted to go to Germany and drive on the Autobahn. Drive it, not be a passenger. I can't do that. Because I can't drive. I've desired it for the Lord to give me a third wife, and it looks like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. Because men, man, goes to his long home the grave there are you know you realize adam is still in his grave cain and abel are still in their grave noah japheth ham and shem are still in their grave david solomon elijah well, elijah did not in the grave still in their grave Mary, Martha, Joseph, Peter, Paul, they're still in the grave. It's a long home. And the mourners go out in the streets, funeral procession. When we used to do the street ministry Saturday morning, it was amazing. We go there, and about noon, we would leave. We're coming home, we come home the same way. As we come home, we pass the cemetery. Every Saturday in the afternoon, there's, there's, a, there's a funeral. Every Saturday. And my daughter said yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, Dad, all the funerals in that, in that cemetery, it, it never fills up. I'm like, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. The fact is that people die, but cemeteries don't get filled up. You never see a sign on a cemetery, closed, no room. You never see a sign on, on, a, on a graveyard, no vacancy. Or even, or even the silver cord. Now, the silver cord, as far as the years of marriage, is 25 years of being married and loose death. Lisa and I got married in 1991, November, and she died September 2010. 
She died a young woman of breast cancer. I'm just trying to figure it out here. 30, 40 years of marriage. Or there are some saying it's life. Your life will be loose. You're coming to the end of your of your time. You're coming to the end where eternal life will begin. When you die, that's not it. When you die, your eternal life begins. Either you're with Jesus by faith with Jesus and the gospel that you have believed alone. You'll be absent from this body and present with the Lord. If you have, have rejected Jesus, you have not called for the, the, the gospel. You've got religion. You've got nothing. You've got science. You've got education. You got Republicans, whatever you got, you die. You're going to an eternal life of hell. The older you get, the less time you have. Every day you wake up is a brand new day, but every day you wake up, you're coming one step closer to the rapture, or you're you're one day to the grave. And you don't know, I don't know when the time is. And there are some that says it's your spine, your backbone. And when, you know, the vertebrae start separating and you, you're hunched over. And definitely now your strength is gone. Your back hurts. I, I have an injury from, from an electric boat, um, 1990, 1991. And I settled the lawsuit. And then for a while, the pain went, I didn't think about the pain. Well, guess what? The pain has now come back. My, I got lower back. And there's nothing that can be done. You say, take medication. I'm stage 3B kidney disease. You got to watch what, what you give me for medication. Your medication to help this thing may put me on dialysis. I'm very close to kidney failure. So now your back is going to start hurting. Well, you can't lift weights like that. Or the golden bowl will be broken. 50 years of marriage. That's a long time. Death. Widowhood. Sleep. Some say it's, that could be the brain, the golden ball. Alzheimer's. Schizophrenia. And all the other things that affect people. I've been in nursing homes where there are people who have to wear a band around their foot. So if they, they go towards an exit of the place, it sets off an alarm. You can't go out there. There are children who loved their mother or father or both. And like I said, Rachel found me out in the middle of the road, panicky. There's times, you know what? You got to put them in a nursing home. If you can't watch them, there's some, time, there's some medical conditions, some things with the brain. If you can't watch them, the lovely thing to do is if, if you can get a nurse to stay or somebody to stay, okay. But if no one can watch them and they are a danger to their own life, the best thing is a nursing home. My daughter's struggling right now because she thinks I'm going to think it's wicked, it's evil that I'm going to a nursing home that she's putting me there. I was like, no, you're not doing it. I want to do it. And recent events in my life, she's turned to, you better go, Dad. Like I said, she calls me, she checks on me. The other day she called me and she said, I want to make sure you're not in the middle of the road. Because it's happened a couple times. Like I said, sometimes my mind just goes. I don't know. There are times she, she'll look at my hand and say, Dad, what's that bruise? Dad, what's that blister? I don't know. I made french fries in the toaster oven. I had some Pop-Tarts or something. I made toast and toast. Maybe I touched the hot. She's like, Dad, you don't even remember? She, I have no feelings in my fingers. 
I can burn my fingers on the toaster oven and not feel it. And she'll look at my hands like, Dad, you got the big, where'd you get that from? My big toe, I mean, too much information. It's got a big bruise on it. She goes, Dad, where'd you get that? I don't know. I have no feeling in my feet. I I trip myself when I come close to a furniture item because I don't even feel that I have now kicked that leg. McDonald's yesterday, my shoe came off. I started walking out, and Rachel's like, uh, Dad, are you forgetting something? I'm like, no, what? <laughs> come on, Rachel, tell me. I, go, I forget things all the time now. She said, Dad, your shoe, you don't have your shoe on. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Now that one, look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 5, written by Solomon. You say, what is that? Proverbs 5, 15. Drink waters out of thy own sister. Running waters out of thy own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, the rivers of waters in the street. Let them be only thy own and not a strangers with thee. Let the fountain be blessed. And re excuse me, rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So back to Ecclesiastes. The pitcher be broken at the fountain. The whole verse of six is death. Your wife dies. I had two wives die. Death happens. I had no idea Lisa was dying. She knew. She told her, her friends at work and all that. She says, I, I just don't want to tell Style. He'll be, he'll be broken. And I am. She was right. I I gave her a hug and a kiss. I won't tell the whole story. I gave her a hug and a kiss in the hospital bed. And when I kissed her, she died. My lips kissing her. She died. Tracy, we knew she she wouldn't quit smoking. She got lung cancer. We knew she was going to die. She died quicker than expected, which is the mercy of God, because following her death, COVID came. <laughs> That's when we know everything was shut down. You got COVID. I mean, you were in a hospital and all that. But you've got to come to the respect and honor of your age. And if you're married, you've got to come to the, to the realization one of you two are going to die. There's no way, unless the rapture, outside the rapture, Enoch's wife, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can say she was a widow. What do you say to a, to a wife whose husband was raptured? He didn't die. Elijah was taken up with the chariot and the horses. Other than those two men and Jesus, there are men who have been married to wives. Their wives have been married to men. And one of them died. And they've had the 25 years. They had the 50 years. Now that fountain, the waters, the memories are gone. They went to their long home. All you got now is memories and pictures, hopefully. That's the best thing you can do for, for a widow, memories. I tell widows all the time, because I'm a widow twice, memories. I know someone whose husband passed away, and the first thing I told her, well, she, I said, memories. The good and the bad. I said, don't forget the bad memories. Because you know what? How <laughs> oh, that bad memory would be, maybe, you know, maybe you, you went to a restaurant to make up. Maybe you went somewhere to make up. Or the wheel broken at the sister. You know what? You're old. You sit in a nursing home. And you're waiting for your long home. You buy a house with your spouse. Hey, that rhymes. 
You get it home, home sweet home. You end up in a nursing home. And then you go to your long home. And if you're saved, you're born again, then you go to your home, capital H. If you're lost, you go to hell, your home, small h. Death is coming no matter what and who you are. Outside the rapture, death is coming. Your life will stop. You have better believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have better gotten saved before your death. Because you can't get saved afterwards. No one can pray you out of the grave. Go to a graveyard. Go to a cemetery. Their wheels ain't spinning no more. The mourners are going out in the streets. Now within time of your family... They're going to die. They're going to forget you. you. You don't believe me? Go walk in the graveyard. Read the names on the tombstone. Well, who's that person? Oh, that's Grandpa. I haven't thought about Grandpa in a long time. I don't know who that person is. There's no flowers on the graves. They forgot about you. Then shall thou, then shall the dust return to the earth. Adam was made out of dust. Adam was made out of the earth. You're going back to the dust. Adam and Eve sinned against what God told them not to do of eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That brought death. You're going to die outside the rapture. I don't care what medical science does. I don't care what, what, what the pharmacies do. I don't care what the hospital can do. I don't care what the doctor does. You're all going to die outside the rapture. The wages of sin is death. And before you die, you better put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Because if you don't, your long home will be hell. Literally. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You are a body. The body goes in the tomb. It goes in the coffin. It gets turned to ashes in the incinerator. Your spirit, your life, your lungs, your, your motion of, of living is God's. Whether you're saved or lost, your spirit goes back to God. Even animals have a spirit. Animals don't have a soul. Dogs don't go to heaven. Cats don't go to heaven. Tweety birds don't go to heaven because they don't have a soul. But they have a spirit and a body. You have a soul. Your soul is eternal. When you take your last breath, if you're saved, the Bible says to be absent from the body. There you are dead. Now your soul is with God. It's with Jesus in heaven unto the rapture. When your body will come out of that grave and meet all that are saved in the clouds. And then we go with Jesus. Your soul, if you have never trusted in Jesus and you are lost, you are a religion, you are a science, you are vanity. Your soul will wake up in hell in torments for all eternity. You may not live to be elder. You may not live to be age. You don't know what age you're going to die. But if God gives you the grace. God gives you the mercy. God gives you the love. God gives you the sound mind. God gives you the power to be up there in years. That loved one whether it be your husband or your wife, often, often, often tell and show them you love them because one day they may not be there. One day you may not be there. I miss my wife, Lisa. One way I, I would probably forget about it is I had Alzheimer's or my brain goes. There are many things that... 
I, listen, there are things I've done to Lisa. I, I repent before the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell her through Jesus, I'm sorry. God literally blessed me wonderfully with a wonderful woman like Lisa. But it was either her or me. And the Lord took her home. As I get older, I'm going to get weaker. All will. My ears are going. I've had many ear infections. That doesn't help. But, but your hearing's going to go. That's the music. Your, your eyes are going to go. That's the darkening of the window. Your hands are going to go. Your feet are going to go. Your back is going to go. Your muscles are not going to be muscles. Your mouth is going to Your teeth. Your smelling. Your hair. The only thing that doesn't go and gets more of is pain. Now let me give you one last thing. I already spoke about it. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. If you're young listening to this video, you better be very careful. Because the sin and the evil that you do may come back and haunt you. I'm 54 years old. I've had many things that come in my life that I did growing up as a child. I, I, I didn't know the Bible. God don't care. God's given you a conscience of right and wrong. You are going to reap what you sow. And the mercy and grace of God is you may not sow, I mean, you may not reap as much as you should. You know, there's some men out there today. They may be sitting in their living room watching TV. They may be sitting in the house doing something. And one day they may hear Coming. I open up the door. There's a woman there with a child. He faintly remembers her. She, uh, it's Robbie. Well, hi, Robbie. It's your son. You take care of him now. He got in the bed with the wrong woman and he reaped the child. The doctor may tell you it's emphysema. I've had that happen. In COPD. It's the smoking. You got to quit that smoking. Now, God's giving me grace. 1998 or 9, uh, my lung doctor told me I had emphysema and COPD. He told me I was going to die and sit right, right there. We, we, Lisa and I sat at, in his office behind his desk, and he said, Mr. Hayward, Mrs. Hayward, I got your test results. He said, You got emphysema. You got COPD. You got six months to live. Now, I've got to the point where breathing. One time, we were walking in a parking garage to the car. I, 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 I passed out on the hood of the car. I couldn't breathe. I'm coughing and hacking and all that. And the neighbor across the street, oh, come on, Stanley, knock it off. I, get sm I quit smoking in the late 1990s. 99. I think it was. I still got the cough, lung, the coughing and all that. You better quit that smoking. Tracy didn't. She got lung cancer. When your doctor tells you your liver is gone, you're reaping all the alcohol you drink. When you have a VD and something's messed up with your private parts, you're reaping of an immortal, sexual, sinful life. When you're crying and you're in agony and you're in pain emotionally because years ago you had an abortion, you're going to reap. 
They don't tell you about that. They think, oh, life is hunky-dory. No, it may not be. When you're sitting there, you're wondering, oh, gee, if I had that child, he'd be graduating from high school now. I wonder what he would have been. I wonder what he would look like. When you are when you grow up as a fool, you're gonna reap foolish things. When you put one tomato plant seed in the ground, and that tomato plant comes up, you get tons of tomatoes. You don't get just one tomato. You get tons of tomato from one plant. That's sowing and reaping. You better go to God. And you better get that love. You better get that power. And the very first thing of love, I know I said out of order, because the very first thing about the love of God is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in shall not perish. You better get the love of God and salvation of Jesus Christ alone. Then he'll give you the power. You see, an unsaved man can go through life and he can do everything he wants. He can do his bucket list. He can become the supervisor. He can get that big fancy car he wants. He can get the big fancy house. He can get all the toys he wants. And then when he dies, he's in his long home. He, listen, listen. Don't you know from the pharaohs, they put everything they owned in their tombs. They are probably in hell today and all their goods is in museums and still in those tombs and those pyramids. He with the most toys in the end ends up in an empty hole. And it's ridiculous to think they got coffins with a little secret box that you can put, you know, why? They're not going to get it. You will get older and older. How old? I don't know. You are going to do things in your life that you're going to reap. You go to work. You work 40 hours. You get a 40-hour paycheck. You do stupid and foolish and sinful things. You're going to get the hours. And it's going to be a lot more hours than what you put in. But by God's grace and mercy, you don't get the full. He gives you blessings. As I said, the lung doctor, the official doctor of the lungs, pulmonary doctor, back in the 1990s, he said you had six months to live. This is 2023. I had an episode when I had an infection in my foot, and I just got sick, and I had every blanket on me. I had every electric blanket on me. I was just shivering. I was sick. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. Tracy took me to the hospital. They told her any longer I would have been dead. It was so serious. I, I found a letter that Tracy wrote to her sons. They say Stolly's going to die. and I'm going to come back home. Blah, 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 blah. She was expecting me to die. I went in the hospital last year, the year before. And I died. And I see no light. I didn't see Jesus. I, I died. They brought me back to life. Because God wants, listen, I want to go home. I want to go to the, I want to go to heaven. I want to go with Jesus. I want to go where Lisa and my grandparents are. I want to go to heaven, but God's like, not yet. I got to wake up every morning and pray and thank God he's giving me another day. And if I'm not going anywhere, which I'm not going anywhere, may God bless me with through the Facebook ministry. But what we went through, through the elderly and the age, that's what happens when you get old. And I'm only 54. You need to find somebody who's 70 and maybe correct me or even build more to what I said. But the Bible does give you a lesson on age. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Now, he finishes it up, and we're going to finish it up. He finished up an entire book about worldliness. 
living in the world, doing worldly things, expressing all your money, expressing all who you are, getting everything you want, going for the gusto, just do it, everything Solomon does. And he concludes, we'll do the conclusion, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. All right, let's nail it down. Let's pin it down. Let's get it. Fear God. Then we, wait a minute. The spirit of fear is not of the Lord. Okay, yeah, but the fear of God will keep you from sin. The fear of God will, hey, you won't be bringing home any reaping. Your reaping will be glorious in righteousness for fearing God. Fearing God is healthy. It will keep you from sin. It will keep you walking with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Keep his commandment. All right, we're in the Old Testament. But Christians have commandments too. Adam had a commandment. We're to love the brethren. We're to preach the gospel, not church. We're to, to read our Bibles. We're to pray for each other. For this is the whole duty of man saved or lost. A lost man is to fear God and keep his commandments. A saved man is to fear God and keep his commandments. All men. For God shall bring every work to judgment. Whether you go to the judgment seat of Christ saved or the great white throne judgment lost. And there are some saved there. Your works will appear before God and you'll have to give an account. With every secret thing. You got skeletons in your closet. God will open the door. You got things that you ought not to be having in your drawers. God will pull those drawers open. You got things underneath your mattress. You got things in the car. You go places where you're not supposed to. Your wife doesn't know. Your husband doesn't know. Your mother doesn't know. Your father don't know. Your children don't know. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. God knows. It ain't Santa Claus. It's God. Whether it be good, all right, or whether it be evil. No matter how old you get, you're going to give an account to God for everything. Now, let me give you one more verse. This just came into my head. Sorry, I said, 1 John 1, 9. For everything that you do, for your sins, because you're going to sin, even saved. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every sin that's under the blood of Jesus Christ that has been forgiven and forgotten by God, that is cleansed by God, you won't have to give it account for. I can tell you sins I've done, I won't. I pray to God, I confess before God. God, God don't see him, God don't know him. I won't give an account for those. You better read your Bible, you better pray, you better preach the gospel, and you better confess your sins. And live right. <laughs>